The forgotten heat engine that stunned historians and tripled firewood life. If you've ever chased down the secrets of old world heating, you eventually run into a wall that doesn't make sense. How did families in some of the coldest regions on Earth survive brutal winters with a fuel supply that would barely last an American household a single month today? The answer sits inside a block of brick and stone that looks unassuming until you understand what it actually does. The Russian stove wasn't rustic charm. It was a weapon against the cold, built by people who treated firewood like gold. And once you see how it worked, you realize it was less a fireplace and more a heat-storing machine that outperformed nearly everything used in Europe, even well into the age of steel and industry. Across the 17th to 19th centuries, northern Russian communities lived through winters that sat below freezing for half the year. Six months of cold, six months of frost. Yet the amount of wood they burned was astonishingly small, recorded in estate logs, monastery accounts, and household records. They weren't exaggerating. They were out-engineering everyone else. The secret? A stove that acted like a slow-release thermal battery, wringing out nearly every usable calorie before letting a whisper of smoke escape the chimney. That's why historians and engineers keep returning to it, and why survivalists today still borrow its tricks when they need heat that lasts without burning through a forest. The brilliance starts with the gas path hidden inside the stove. A western fireplace lets smoke shoot straight upward. Pretty, yes. Efficient, absolutely not. Most of your heat vanishes with the smoke. The Russian stove flipped this idea on its head. Instead of a straight shot, the builders carved an internal labyrinth twisting channels that force hot gases to travel sideways, downward, then upward again before leaving the flue. Every bend extracts more heat. Every detour pushes warmth into the bricks. This channeled gas path turns rising smoke into a heat delivery system instead of wasted energy. That's the first lesson any modern builder or off-grid homesteader can steal. If you're building a heater, a smoker, even a small rocket mass heater, make the heat stay with you longer. Trap it. Force it to work for you. A two-hour burn in a properly designed mass heater can warm a room for an entire day. That's not magic. It's physics applied with patience. The second key is mass, and the Russians understood it better than anyone. Metal stoves heat fast and die fast. The Russian stove is the opposite. Several tons of brick absorb heat slowly, settle into a deep warmth, and refuse to let it go. Rural families lived by this rhythm fire in the morning, seal the stove, let it radiate steady heat all day and night. You can still see photographs from the early 20th century of families sleeping directly on the giant warm platform built over the stove. Not for nostalgia, for survival. This idea, well, it translates directly into modern real-world survival. If you want heat that lasts, you build for mass. Stone, brick, cob, anything that can store heat. A small cabin with a mass-based heater will outperform a flashy metal stove every single time when it comes to fuel conservation. If someone today wants a long-lasting heat source for a homestead or, you know, a bug-out shelter, the first rule is simple. Prioritize storage over speed. The horizontal firebox is where the magic of combustion happens. One brilliant detail, often overlooked, is the stove's low horizontal firebox. Instead of flames racing upward into a chimney, the fire burns hotter, longer, more completely. Hot gases mix and reburn, 
squeezing every bit of energy from the wood. Less unburned fuel goes up the flue. More heat stays in the stove. If you've built a Dakota fire hole or experimented with small rocket stoves, you've seen this principle in action. Contain the fire. Keep heat concentrated. Allow gases to reburn. It's the same science behind modern ultra-efficient stoves, except the Russians perfected it centuries earlier. If you're improvising heat in the wilderness, you can mimic this. Dig channels, seal gaps with clay, build a small batchbox stove from stone. The idea is never burn more wood, it's burn smarter. The stove was a complete survival system, not just a heater. This is where the Russian stove earns legendary status. It didn't just heat homes. It cooked food, dried clothes, warm bedding, preserved herbs, and even acted as a recovery bed during sickness. Nothing went to waste. Every calorie from the fire served multiple purposes. The slow cooking chamber above the firebox made nutrient-dense porridges and stews. The top platform became a warm sleeping area. Little niches stayed hot enough to dry boots or herbs. When illness swept through a village, the stove became the closest thing they had to therapeutic heat. Modern survivalists can borrow this mindset instantly. Your heat source shouldn't do only one job. Design a stove bench for sitting and sleeping. Build a drying rack above the flue path. Use residual heat for slow cooking. Efficiency isn't just about fuel, it's about multifunctionality. The deeper lesson is that survival engineering grows from necessity, not luxury. Historians and engineers both agree. The Russian stove wasn't a fluke. It was the result of generations refining a design under brutal conditions. Everything about it, every curve, every brick, every hidden chamber, reflects a culture that had to stretch resources through winter after winter. And here's the insight that matters for modern builders, preppers, or anyone studying historical systems. Fuel longevity isn't about stockpiling wood. It's about shaping your environment to hold on to the heat you already generate. The Russian stove did that better than anything in its era, including heating systems used across Europe during the same time frame, even leading up to World War II. Master the principles and you can apply them anywhere. Build for mass. Trap heat. Reburn gases. Let every BTU do double or triple duty. That's how rural families survived with a fraction of the firewood their western neighbours used. That's how you can heat smarter too. If you want more deep history breakdowns, forgotten engineering and survival systems that actually worked in the real world, hit that subscribe button for History HQ and share this video with fellow researchers. Let's keep this knowledge alive.